Hello, welcome to the virtual orientation for OESP. I am here to introduce you to your facilitators, talk a little bit about the purpose of the course, give you an example of what you're working towards, and also show you the course navigation a bit. Um, so I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Aloha and I am the Technology Services Librarian at Cabrillo College. I also teach online library courses and I'm a lead course reviewer for the Online Education Initiative. And our other facilitator is Lene, and she can't be here with us uh, live because she is in Europe right now and it's after midnight there. But Lene, as you can see from her facilitator page, is a very experienced online instructor. She's the training and development coordinator for At One, and she teaches communication online. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and give you an overview of what we're doing in the course. Um, as you may know, OESP generally covers designing new courses, improving existing courses, but also effectively facilitating online learning. Um, and we use two sets of standards to do this. We use the At One standards for quality online teaching, and we also use the course design rubric from the Online Education Initiative. And a lot of people wonder why we use two different sets of standards for the course. And it's really because when we think about online teaching, there are two overarching concepts that we have to keep in mind. There's the design of your course, but then there are also your teaching practices. So you could be, for example, a great teacher, but not necessarily a great course designer and vice versa. Um, so when we're using the course design rubric from the Online Education Initiative, that is going to be used primarily to, to guide your course design. And then when we use the At One standards, those are going to be used primarily to guide your teaching practices, how you actually teach your online course. Um, so sometimes I think it's useful to show an example of what you're actually working on throughout the class, right? So this right here is an example of the course that I developed when I was a student in OESP um, a while ago. And what you'll notice right away is that there are only three modules in this course. And that is because you are not being asked to develop an entire online course. You do not have to develop 16 weeks of material. Um, you're going to use the orientation module, so you're going to develop your orientation to your course. Then you're also going to choose a content module to develop. I chose week four in my class because that is the most critical week for what I'm teaching. So that is the week I decided to develop for the course. And then you'll also have your ePortfolio module. So I'll just show you really briefly. Um, you're going to kind of build out an orientation module and then a content module with a variety of content and assessment, and then the ePortfolio module. Uh, really quickly, I'll show you a page of the ePortfolio in case any of you were wondering what that should look like. So at the top of the page, you will see that I've included the standard for that um, page of the ePortfolio, as well as the bullet points. And then I went ahead and copied and pasted my reflection for that week into this area. And at the bottom of the page, I have um, a short list of evidence that demonstrate how I satisfied that standard within my sandbox modules. So hopefully that is a useful example for you. Next, I would like to really quickly take you through the navigation of the course and highlight some of the more important areas because I know that most of you have already viewed the navigation video that we have in the course, so I'm not going to show you everything, but just the things that we find really important. So when you first log into Canvas, you'll see along the left-hand side of the screen your global navigation menu, and that is always there for you no matter where you are in Canvas. The first link is your account, and if you click on that, you should see an option to set your notifications for the course. This is very important. Do this right away if you haven't already. Um, it's going to take whatever contact methods you have on file 
with Canvas and ask you if you would like notifications sent to that contact method and how often you would like notifications. Would you like them right away as a daily summary, a weekly summary, or never? Um, so the ones that I recommend are announcement. You definitely want to have any course announcements sent immediately to your email or at the very least um, as a daily summary, but I think immediately. You probably want to have your grading sent to you immediately and then submission comments sent to you either immediately or as a daily summary. I like immediately because these submission comments will tell you if I've left a comment on your grade, for example, or if you left a comment when you submitted for me and you asked a question and then I responded to it, now both of us are getting notifications of these comments that are being made. The other thing you want to think about are your notifications for discussions. I prefer to be notified as a summary of the discussion post for each day because I don't like getting a bunch of notifications every day of new discussion posts. And then conversations. This is when somebody sends you a message using the inbox. So I like to get a notification immediately if I have an inbox message. All right, the inbox, now that we're there, right? I would like to stress that since this is a six week course, you are going to want to let us know when you have questions immediately. Don't waste any time trying to figure it out yourself or getting frustrated. Just go ahead and send us a message using the inbox or using the Q&A forum within the course on Canvas. The next thing that is very useful for you uh, related to that is the help icon at the very bottom of the global navigation menu. If you click help, you're going to see a lot of options, um, obviously specific to your campus, but also you can search the Canvas guides for frequently asked questions or how to achieve something that you're trying to do. They're really useful. Next up, I wanted to point out the dashboard in Canvas. Obviously has your courses, but then it also has handy to-do lists on the right-hand side of the screen, and you can use those to link directly to what you want to do. Um, very useful as both a student and an instructor. But if you actually click to enter our course, here's where we want to give you some tips. So the course homepage right now, you'll see at the top, you'll have our most recent announcements. Then you have an introduction to what we're doing for this week. And then you'll see some buttons at the bottom of the screen. And um, I want to point out that there are a variety of ways to navigate through the course. So you can use these buttons, obviously. This week it says start here, but next week that will change and allow you to start the next unit of materials. Um, you also have some handy links to the most used resources. Or you can choose to use the navigation menu on the left, right, to go to announcements or to the modules is a handy way to get there. Um, so just keep an eye on the homepage because it will change. We change it every week, usually on Sunday or Monday. And not only will you get an overview of the week and a link directly to the unit for that week, but you're also going to get our office hours for that week. And we'll also post, um, we're going to start having weekly tech talks, uh, which are like basically, you know, a, a pun on the word TED Talks, but they're tech talks, and we're going to give you Canvas tips and answer any questions during those. So definitely check the homepage every time you log in to see what may be there. And then let's try clicking the Start Here button and see what that looks like. So if you click the button from the homepage that we've provided, it's actually going to drop you right into the first page of the unit. And as I said, that button will change every week. So Right now, it takes you right to the first page of our unit. You're going to read through the page, and then you're going to click the Next button. Um, you always want to use this Next navigation within Canvas. This will take you through the entire unit in order, and it will get to you to all of the assignments that need to be submitted for the unit. Everything is here. So if you have to post to a discussion, you're going to find it using the Next button. You're going to find every lesson, every quiz, every assignment. Um, every unit starts with this overview page and then ends with a summary before you move on to the next unit. 
and just really want to stress that the units should be completed in chronological order. So walking through one page at a time. Uh, so if you click the next button, you'll see it takes you right into what we want you to do next. And one thing to point out is that some pages do have multiple tabs to navigate through. So just make sure that you're seeing everything before clicking the next button. Uh, let me look for a page that has the tabs just to show you really quick. I think we'll find one when we get to here. <laughs> so you'll see on this page you have your traditional content, but then you see there is an additional tab to click on to give you a little bit more content that you do need to view before you click that next button at the bottom. And we do have a little reminder, make sure you have reviewed both uh, pages of information above before clicking the next button. Now, one way you can kind of keep track of where you are, if you do click on the modules link on the left navigation menu, this will show you um, basically what we like to call a table of contents of the course, right? So it's going to give you all of the, the units on one page, everything that's published anyway, it will show you. And this is one way where you can drop into where you've left off. So in this course, we actually number each page 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So um, let's say you're halfway through unit zero and you've got to take a break. Just make a note, a mental note, or write it down. Oh, I left off at, left off at 0 0.5. That way, when you come back to the course, you can just click on modules and then click right on to 0 0.5. You don't have to go back through unit zero and next to get to the page you left off on. Um, one more area I'll show you really quick on the modules page is the OESP resources and what you'll find here, and we're an instructor view right now, your student view is going to look slightly different, but what I wanted to show you is that right now you have the at one standards and the course design rubric here. But pretty soon, after this orientation is done, I'm going to post a copy of the virtual orientation and I'm going to post a schedule of the tech talks and we'll also archive all of those for you. So this resources module, you'll have more access to as we add material. And then the final area of the course that I wanted to highlight um, was the discussions area. Um, the discussions in this course are designed where you do your initial post by Wednesday of the week, and then you do your follow-up post, um, your posts to your, to your peers are due by Saturday night. So we really want to encourage you to get into the discussion early in the week, right? Um, you've got to get that first post in by Wednesday, and then you have some time to go back and read through and reply to your peers. And if you do spread it out like that, Give, give yourself some time. Don't try and do your initial post and all your peer replies all at once necessarily because um, the discussion does develop over the course of the week. Uh, so it's nice to kind of check back on the forum a little bit later on and see if anybody's replied to you and reply to them. And um, the other forum that we have at all times is the Q&A forum. And we would really like you to use this forum as much as possible. This is a place for you to ask a question we're going to respond within 24 hours, and uh, if you know the answer to somebody's question, you can jump in and answer it. And this way we get kind of a nice archive of the frequently asked questions for the course, and you can check it and get the answer to a question that you may have that has already been answered. So we really would like you to use the Q&A form, you know, for anything that's related to the course. And then if you have a more personal question, of course, you can contact, contact us using the inbox. All right, so that was all I had to highlight for you. We are really looking forward to working with you over the course of the next six weeks. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions, concerns, etc. And we're really excited to see your sandboxes develop. So good luck.